Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another Dice Tower review. My name is Z Garcia. I'm Chris Yee. Today we are taking a look at a two-player tile game called Yosemite. In this game, you are going to be collecting these tiles and then turning them in to take a picture. You're supposed to be taking pictures for various judges at the parks here and uh, then getting victory points for that. Before we go any, any farther here, or further, uh, about our thoughts on this one, let me go ahead and give you an overview of how the game works. Just a brief little look at it. Come on back. We'll tell you what we think of it. So here's the game mostly set up, ready to begin. We are going to select randomly 10 photograph cards out of 20. We will reveal two of those. And then we are going to shuffle up these gold cards and reveal two of them. The rest can go back to the box. Uh, we shuffle up all the animal tiles. Everybody gets three to begin with. We put out this display of five by five, and then we shuffle up the rest and set them aside. This tent token begins here in the middle. We've got these tokens for the five locations. Everybody begins with one fish on the, the track. You're good to go. So here's how the game is going to work. We are attempting to collect animals. We are attempting to have this marker move towards our side and get us points at the end of the game. And mainly take these photographs. Each photograph shows a location and it shows several animals as well as the number of victory points up here in the corner. At the end of the game, you are going to score the photos you took. If you win these goals for having those animals show up more than anybody else in your photos, you'll get those worth four points each. If you collect these tokens, which will show up later, you will get points based on the photos you took at that location. And then if the tent is on your side, you'll get points. It's also possible that the tent will already be at the maximum spot on your side and you would attract it again. In that case, you get one of these, each one worth a single point that you cannot lose. And so that's the scoring, more or less. Let's go ahead and discuss how the game works. For this overview of the game, I'm going to go ahead and reveal the player's tiles, though normally you'd be hiding these from your opponent. But I'm going to make these open just so I see what's going on, what might be a decent move versus not such a smart move. So we pick a start player, it'll be blue, and you select where you want to start on the grid out here. So again, you're trying to match up these animals to the ones in the picture. So my uh, good friend over here is going to select perhaps this tile, and I am going to select uh, this one right here, okay? Then we begin, and on your turn, the very first thing you can do, and it'll be blue across the table first, is you can eat fish, your own fish there, to move. For every fish you eat, you can move one space. You cannot end up with your opponent or go through their piece. Once that's done, then you can explore. You have a couple of choices. You can just move to an adjacent tile and fish. You gain one fish, that's it. Uh, you can, instead of doing that, take the tile you are on. Before you do that, you must move according to the animal that it pictures. They each have some sort of movement ability. And then you are going to gain the tile that you left from and the ability that it lists. So, the bear, for example. Uh, the black bear says you move exactly two spaces in the same direction. Then you may move your opponent one space in any direction. So this player is going to go one, two. They could move me if they wanted to, perhaps move me there. They will take the bear tile. It has a fish symbol, so they will gain a fish and they will keep that tile there. Then we will replenish this and it comes to me. So on my turn, I could select this one that I'm on, the uh, bighorn sheep there, which is that one. It lets me move as many spaces as I want to in any one direction. So I'm going to go all the way across. If I want to, I could do that, or I could go to here, for example. Let's say I'm going to go there. I would take this, and it shows the tent, so I'm going to place the tent here. If it already was on the track, I would simply pull it one towards me but it begins uh, just in between them, so I'll place it right there. Then we replace that tile, and it'll be my opponent. My opponent is on this tile. Uh, 
but they could, again, eat fish before they take a turn and move somewhere else. So let's take a look at what tiles they've gotten if they could take a picture already. It looks like they could, so they need to end uh, or begin their turn, rather, on a tile that has the photograph, because that is the ability you get. So they're going to eat one fish, they're going to move one over, and they'll begin their turn, really, there on that tile. Uh, the uh, red fox there says you can move one, two, or three spaces in any directions. You can change directions. So they're going to go one, two, three. They will then take this tile and they can take a photograph. So the two photographs available, this one here shows the red fox, the bear, and the sheep. They could give that up. The red fox, which they're holding here, sheep, bear. So these three tiles would be set aside in the discard pile, and then they take this photograph. We will replace that photograph with a new one. We will replenish this spot, and then it is my turn. Now, um, the game is going to be over when there's only one photograph left. So basically when you go to replenish and, and it is impossible. So one of these will not be taken. There will be one left. There's also in this pile some locations that will show up as tiles are taken. If I take this one, I might, you know, move there, take this, take a photograph myself. And then perhaps when I go to replenish, it's a location. If it is a location, you're going to find the matching token and you are going to place it on that tile. If a player begins their turn on that tile or uses fish to move on to it, basically begins their claim uh, part of their step, then they could stay there, not move, and claim this token instead. And you're going to get bonus points for every picture you've taken that is uh, in this location. And again, they show you the background and they do have the name El Capitan here with these animals there. So that's one way to do that. And then if I begin my next turn on this tile, there's nothing there to claim. No animal that will move me. So I could eat fish and move or I could just do the fishing turn where I move one and fish. Gain one fish and that's it. So you're collecting these tiles, making sets. Uh, the three symbols give you fish pull the tent towards you, or allow you to take a photograph. Uh, this continues until, like I said, all the pictures are taken, um, except the last one. And then we add up our score. Uh, there is also an ability for you to, and this is just a general rule, you can discard two animals, any two, as a wild animal. If you are missing something in the picture, but you've got other tiles you can utilize towards that, you can two to one make them wild for something you are missing. And then you do have a hand limit of 10 tiles at the end of every turn. So when you are resetting the board by adding new tiles in, you need to make sure you have no more than 10. But that's pretty much the game. Try to get points from photos, from the tent, from these matching locations. And uh, if you've got the most, you're going to be the winner of the game. All right, that's Yosemite. So let's talk about it. And uh, I like to begin usually with the look of something. And... Uh, I like the idea of, of nature-themed things. There's a lot of them lately. Um, right. There's no shortage of them, that's for just, sure. It's, it's exploding, this theme. It's all over the place. I feel the look of this one is one of the sort of least inspired looks I've seen from a game that has this these trappings, this sort of you know look and theme. and It's about photography even, which is supposed to be visually uh, you know, arresting, appealing. And it just looks very clip art heavy. Yeah, the cover doesn't convey that. The cover, I think, is really gorgeous. Yeah. A lot of striking colors, uh, beautiful wide panorama. Clearly a painting. Also, you can see the brush strokes in this. This is a, yeah. a good-looking cover. I like it. And then when I saw the innards of the box, I thought, oh, mismatch. Got yeah. it. You know, and, and so, sure, that... that Unfortunately, tempers your expectations a little bit when you see something that looks like that and you think, oh, maybe this isn't... Hopefully the gameplay is still good. Yeah, in fact, I was uh, looking over here in the credits. Uh, it says uh, the illustrations are by Beth Sobel. Some of this artwork is by Beth Sobel, which, who is a fantastic illustrator. And then additional art by Shutterstock. <laughs> um, Got it. So pictures that were found on, on shutter uh, stock there and used for this, and again they just feel a little slapdash. It's a little, know, it's the, a little uh, via Getty. 
you know. Yeah, uh, so I, I'm not a big fan of the way the animals look, just sort of superimposed on the little picture cards. The tiles look bland. The whole thing just looks uninspired, and I feel like that's a word I'm going to keep coming back to, unfortunately, in this, uh, this review of the game. So let's talk, now that we've discussed that, gameplay itself. Mechanisms, what's going on, how does it make us feel? Um, you want to jump in on that? Yeah, I there's a lot of these small box two player games that I tend to like because mm -hmm. hey, there's there's not a ton of room. You got to do a few clever things to really kind of sell it, and I felt like I didn't know what's really the hook. You're yeah. you're on an animal tile. You have to move off of it per a certain animal type of movement, mm -hmm. but none of those were very captivating, and they weren't thematic either to kind of easily remember. I'm on the bear space, which means. Is this the one move one, two, or three? Is this move two in a straight line and move my opponent one? Yeah, and you don't even have to run into them. It doesn't, it's not about that. Like the snake, the rattlesnake, you move one or two, and if you land it on your opponent, that one lets you move on to their space, then you push them one. Okay. But then the red fox moves one, two, or three. Because some days he feels a little more sluggish. Uh, um... <laughs> I just don't understand that. And then, of course, tied to that, no player aid for that stuff. The tiles have nothing on them besides the animal and then the icon, which encompasses the entire tile, in fact. Uh, it's color-coded to that symbol. There's only three. But there's no player aid of how they move. That's something that they could have given me a card for. That's something that could have been on the tiles themselves if you wanted to. So it really gets in its own way a lot when it comes to usability, to ease of play. Every time you do this, you have to go and, oh, right, it's the, the bighorn uh, ram there or sheep. Okay, I remember now if I look at the thing. But it, there's just no flow. It seems to get in its own way a lot, right? Yeah, there's no flow is a really good way to put it because on your turn, okay, I, I move off of it per the animal movement, I grab that tile, and then I, then I do its thing. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, <clears throat> that is a simple process, but because I had to keep stopping to look at a picture I took on my phone of the back of the rule book explanation of how the animals move, it, 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 it should be a game that has such a smooth flow that's yeah. constantly interrupted. I agree, yeah. it's it's It would have been an easy fix. Uh, there really should be more thematic. But it also could have been an easy fix to give the players player aids. You don't even need to make that many. The game's only for two people. You could have add, added two cards to this and facilitated that a little bit. Or again, just put it on the tiles. So in that way, it felt like it got in its own way and it felt uninspired. Um, I also thought the game play here was... Tremendously lucky, both in setup. There are some setup things that were head scratchers. And then in execution, just in play, for how much is in here that seems to be strategic. And in fact, the box says a two player tile strategy game. It didn't feel that strategic. No, no, it's, it's purely, well, I, I can move on to this space from where I am, so I guess I will. Yeah. You. It's, it's more tactical if you want to be, you know, talk about this long-term strategy versus the tactical kind of thing. But it wasn't yeah. even immensely tactical. It was kind of, well, that's there. Um, the set collection is, I would agree, uninspired. Yes. I need by the numbers. Yeah, I need to grab that tile because it'll help me get one of those two photo contests or, you know, the, turn in the sets mm -hmm. to get the thing. Got it. There's not a lot of brilliant tactical decisions to make on a turn either. Yeah. The setup for the deck of photographs, there are 20 in the box. You shuffle up, you pick 10. That's half you're excluding. That means it is very mathematically possible for you to exclude an entire location. So it's possible that there are none from one of the places that comes up, and then players ideally race to collect that because it might be worth a lot of points. It also might be impossible for it to, to be worth anything. If those cards are not in the deck, it's literally a dead tile. And you do not know that because you haven't seen the entire deck of 10 pictures yet. That seemed insane to me. 
That just yeah. makes no sense. Some of the things, usually when this happens and you want, you know, in a game design, a, a variety of amounts, it's not normally mathematically possible for one to be eliminated. <laughs> That's how that works, right? If every one of them is in there four times, I'm just picking a random thing, any other game, then you remove three so that it is literally impossible for one to go away entirely. Not so in this game. The last game we played, one of the locations was entirely eliminated. One of them had, I think, one. One card, yeah. And one of them had every copy in there. If you ended up with that one, you had way better chances of getting a high score from that. I mean, getting four of those cards is 14 points. That's, that's a tremendous amount in a game where the scores are about 28-30-ish. I mean... It's half your points. That's, that's insane. So... Yeah. That felt off. Certainly uh, felt uh, like it wasn't quite right. And then the scoring parameters are just sort of boring. The pictures were three or four points. The most of something. Four points. Pulling the ten towards me and towards you. It's the simplest tug of war ever. You know, there's a lot of two-player tug of war games out there. This is lowest common denominator kind of stuff. The one thing I thought was clever from that tug of war was if you if it's already on your extreme end and mm -hmm. you pull that one more time, you just get a permanent victory point chip. Yeah. I thought that was a nice touch. That's something a little bit clever. Yeah. But it's it's, it's tangible. It's a point you can keep. Yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. about the most interesting part of this game, I would say, is Hitting the extremes lets you bank a point that is yours and cannot be pulled back away from you. Cool. That's right. fine. I'm fine seeing that in other games. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and use that. I think that was a good one. But other than that, there's no there's no arc to it. There's no building tension or anything. It's, mm -hmm. it's very flat the whole, the whole way through. And uh, like you said, ultimately, I think uninspired is probably the best word to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Uh, those are our thoughts. Let's go ahead and give this thing a score. What do you got? I'm going to give it a four. I mm -hmm. I don't really want to play this again, and I would pretty much advise you against it. There's so many better games in this two in in the small box two player lines. Mm -hmm. There's so many great ones. There's so many great games that use this theme and this setting and this type of artwork. You almost can't go wrong choosing anything different. Yeah, if there's anything here that in, that attracts you, that inspires you to maybe look into this, there are better options. No matter which the thing is, if it's the theme, you got way better options. Two-player tug-of-war style, way better. Set collection, no. Nothing. Parks, even. Just specifically, thematically, national parks. You got way better options already. So, it's in a crowded field... And it, uh, it's just too late to the party. I was split between a 4 and a 5, so I'm going to give it a 4.5. Same thing, right? I mean, so same as you, basically. 4, 4.5. Um, this one you can miss. Sometimes I say, you know, this game didn't really work for me, but if it calls to you, I wouldn't dissuade you from getting it. I would dissuade you from trying this. This is... Agreed. You can do better than this. There's other more interesting games that will do the same job. So, there you go, everybody. That's Yosemite. My name is Z Garcia. I'm Chris Yee. We will see you on the next one. Take care.